Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, noblemen and knights, welcome to Clarifying Catholicism. You're watching part 20 of a series on the history of the ecumenical councils according to the Catholic Church. Today we are covering the Fifth Lateran Council. Much of this information that we are covering today was gathered from Joseph Kelly's The Ecumenical Councils of the Catholic Church, A History. So if you want an in-depth dive into these topics, make sure to pick up a copy of his book. To see the rest of our episodes, check out the playlist in the description. Without further ado, on to the show. In the last couple of episodes, we talked about how, ever since the disastrous crisis of the three claimants to the papal throne, cardinals worked to diminish papal authority and make them answerable to councils. The late Middle Ages showed this project to be a total failure, as there was a great explosion in papal authority. Most of the popes of this time period were quite wealthy. Many were corrupt, practiced nepotism, took mistresses, and even had children. At the same time, the political authority of popes was also waning a bit. 1452 marked the last time a German emperor was formally crowned by a pope. The practice of frequents or holding church councils regularly was dead. Many popes from this era turned their attention to war games, either protecting or expanding their territory. Pope Julius II rose an army and took back all the lands held by his enemies in Italy. He often went into battle with a full suit of armor. After taking care of the Italians, Pope Julius turned his attention to taking back Italian territory occupied by France. In response, King Louis XII of France held a council in Pisa in which the College of Cardinals would vote against the Pope's military activity, thus exercising the council's authority over that of a Pope's. Pope Julius, clearly seeing what was going on here, called his own council to meet in the Lateran Cathedral in Rome. It opened in 1512. While this council is considered ecumenical by the church, it was scarcely attended and really only held for the purpose of Julius countering King Louis' failed council. Shortly after, the French withdrew from Italy. After Julius's death, the council continued under the leadership of Pope Leo X, who was solely interested in using the papacy for political gain. Many cardinals were interested in reforming the papacy and church hierarchy, but they were limited by Leo's disinterest in the matter. As many of you could probably guess, the political turbulence caused by so many of these popes, especially that of the three popes of the same time era, caused a lot of unrest and distrust of the clergy. Every so often, pro-reform grassroots movements would rise up in frustration of the papacy's amassing corruption. Rome had been used to squashing these rebellions, but in 1517, that would change forever. And we'll discuss that next episode. Have a great day. God bless.